Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're going to turn our Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC into a Modbus server. For this video, we are going to be using one of our PLC trainers. This is the Micro 820 version with the HMI option. Also, we are a little crowd of the day. We're going to be doing Modbus Studio 5000 lessons for the Compact Logics as well. So I just have everything set up. We're going to start with one of our standard trainer programs instead of building this out because this is an easy add-on to really any program. And if you want to follow along, you can go to twcontrols.com and find our sample lessons. And all of them are downloadable right here. And this is the TRN ICP Micro 820 with HMI program. And so it has a Micro 820 in it. It also has our PanelView 800 in it. And it has a PowerFlex 525 drive. And on any of them, in fact, let me close this out just so you can see this. If you'll just double click on the PLC at the top of the left pane in your typical program, it's going to bring up this dialog box here. And the main thing we're usually concerned about, if you've watched many of my videos, is we have to make sure that we configure our Ethernet settings, which I have configured. It's 192.168.1.14, and we have a subnet of 255.255.255.0. But right here, you can almost see it. If you scroll down just a little bit, we have Modbus TCP server. And the server state we can have enabled or disabled. Now, one thing, when do we need a server and when do we need a client? This is probably one of the more confusing things. And this isn't a very, we'll say, scientific or engineering approach to it. But what I say is if you have a list of numbers that somebody has given you that you need to read from a PLC, then you're going to need a Modbus client. If you need to create those Modbus numbers for somebody to read, then you need to create a Modbus server. So in this case, we are going to create a server. Right below our Ethernet, just a few down, we have Modbus mapping. And if we'll click on it, then here's where we're going to add our mapping. But I want to highlight this warning right here. It says to communicate via Ethernet, ensure Modbus TCP server state is enabled on the Ethernet configuration page. So that's what it's saying here, is we need to go check that server enable box. So we've, they've made us a nice link here. We can click here. It's going to take us right back to our Ethernet configuration and our Modbus TCP server state we're going to enable. And now we can go right back to our Modbus mappings and we're ready to add some Modbus mappings. So I'm going to click the add button here and that's going to bring up our variable selector. Now we have some variables in here. We'll probably tie some of these across in the end. That's why I wanted a program that already had something. But we're going to start by just creating some registers. And there are many different Modbus registers, but we're going to stick with four basic ones. And I'm going to call the first one Modbus Discrete Output Coils. And these are going to be Boolean tags. But what we're going to do is add a dimension here. And I'm going to make this a dimension of 50. So I'm going to put 0 dot dot 49. And that's going to give us elements 0 through 49. And you can see now we have a plus sign here. And let me drag this column out just a little bit. And so this is what we're going to map. Now we have Modbus discrete coils and 0 through 49. And we're going to leave this at the default it comes up with 1 through 50. Now notice we're putting 0 through 49 in 1 through 50. You know, that's that's a little confusing. So I'm actually going to double click on this. Here's one cool thing about, oops, and here's one cool thing about connected components is in Studio 5000 we would start with 0. We don't actually have to do that connected components. I'm going to make this 1 through 50. And that's going to make this line right up with our Modbus mapping. And just to stick with what you'll normally see, I usually see this as a five digit number. I guess some of them do have six digits. I don't know that it actually matters. I'm going to make this 00001. So now let's do it again. Let's create Modbus discrete input contacts and that'll also be boolean 
and we're going to do one dot dot 50. So we'll select it. And by default, it's actually going to end up back at that same number because there is a difference between 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So in this case, usually your input contacts are going to be actually on 10,000. So I'm going to put a 1 in front of that. And then we're going to get one of those decimals out again. So I'm going to put this on 10,001. So it's going to be 10,001 through 10,050. So this will give us some basic flags, you know, such as you press a button, we could pass a button on over, or we could see that an output's turned on. But also we want to pass data across, maybe an analog signal, you know, a count value, something like that. So we're going to create some integers now. And we're going to create Modbus analog input. And in this case, this is going to be an integer. And we are going to make this also a dimension of 1.50. And we'll select that one. Now notice when we brought this one across, it's going to try to put it right behind that one at 10,000 through 10,050. Usually you're going to see them at 30,000. So I'm going to set this to 30,000 and 1. So it's going to give us 30,000 and 1 through 30,050. And finally, let's create one more. We're going to create Modbus analog output. And that'll also be an integer. And we're going to make it 1 through 50. And it's going to stack it right behind the last one too. But in this case, usually this one's going to be 40,000. So I'm going to make this 40,001. So that'll be 40,001 through 40,050. And we'll go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading your program or any of the setup that we did that seemed like I blew through really fast, look down in the description. We have a whole lesson series on the Connected Components Workbench. And that should have it. Now, in the next video, we're actually going to write a program in our Compact Logics to read this over Modbus TCP. But I wanted to at least have a test here. And honestly, I have not tested this yet. I just Googled really quick and found this Modbus tools right here. And at least according to it, it can test stuff. So <laughs> really quickly, I'm going to try to figure this out. I'm just going to hit the download button. So I'm guessing we need to download the 64 bit of the Modbus poll. All right, and it pops up a quick start guide. Let's see, Modbus poll. And I guess I need a connection. We'll connect. Um, it's asking for a registry key. We're going to register like, okay, you get a 30 day evaluation of this. So we'll see how it works. All right. We could do serial, but we're going to do Modbus TCP. And then we need our IP address, which is 192.168.1.14. And mainly that is the IP address of this micro 820 right here. And that's where I'm getting that value from. Okay, we click that and all right, it says, I guess we're connected and we're going to look at 40,001. Now over here in CCW, we have 40,001 mapped to Modbus analog output and it'll be number one. Now let's go to our global variables. And let's find Modbus analog output and we'll open it up and we're going to look at value number one and let's put a value in one, two, three, four, five. And if we've done everything right, we should be able to go over the Modbus poll and there you go. We've got one, two, three, four, five there and the rest of them will work exactly the same. So that's one thing I do like about the Micro 820 is they make it really easy to put a Modbus server in. Also, up until a few days ago, I would have said you could not put a Modbus server or client into a compact or control logics, but I recently discovered you can. So we're going to have an upcoming video on making this a Modbus server and a client, and we'll do the opposite over here to 820. So we'll make this a server and we'll read data from our Micro 820 as well. 
So I hope this video has been helpful. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out, but you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.